Show. And today we have a very special guest with us. You might recognize him just from the way he looks. Well, some say he can smell corners. Some say he, he hates stairs. And we have, of course, with us today the original black stick from BBC TV's Top Gear. Welcome to the show. Now, Perry, I know you're not going to talk to me with that helmet on, so I'm going to have to ask you to reveal yourself, please. Thank you very much. You're here for a few days. It's wonderful. I love it. My first time. Kuala Lumpur is fantastic. Now I hear, uh, I hear some strange stories, and I hear that the stick was originally going to be called the Gimp. Yes, it was. It's a uh, horrible name. Yeah. It's, <laughs> what happened? Um, well, they came out with this idea. Uh, Jeremy told me that they were bringing the show back because Top Gear had been off air for quite a long time. They said, we're going to bring the show back. We've got this idea, though, for this secret racing driver. You're going to be dressed in black. You're going to be mean. You're going to be moody. Nobody's going to see you. You're going to drive like the wind, and we're going to call you the Gimp. And I said, well, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so then we started talking, and, uh, and then they came up with the idea of the stick. And I said, that's OK. Let's go with it. And you, of course, you were the stick for two seasons. You were the original stick. Yeah, we kicked it off in 2002, and I stayed with it through to 2003. But I was racing for Audi at the same time, and I was pretty busy. So you know, for me, it was a great moment in time, lots of fun. Um, but it was time to stop it, and then, uh, and then I had a terrible ending. Yes, so we all know. But tell me, what, what were those two years like for this day? It was good fun. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously cars and driving and racing around tracks has been a massive part of my life. Um, so that was kind of good fun. It was normal for me. But I think I really also like the thing that we have star in a reason price car. Yeah. Uh, we had a bunch of celebrities coming over, and we would have this little Suzuki Yama. And I would just teach them the finesse of the, the final bit of throttle and brake. Of course, they're completely used to driving on a day to day basis. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah. Actually, it was a good choice of car because it wasn't really fast enough to crash. Yeah, that's you know? true. But it was great. And they all became very competitive. And I really enjoyed the teaching process and how they tried to get a little bit faster all the time. But Jeremy's good fun. I've known him for a long time. But I hear you have to keep the helmet on, though. Yeah, yeah. secrecy was big time. I mean, I even arrived at the top gear track. And just before I got to the security gates, I put my crash helmet on, and so they flipped me through. They knew I was, you know, as the stick. Yes. And even some of the senior production people on the BBC didn't know it was me. So who knew? Who knew? Besides Jeremy, of course. Jeremy knew. Oh, Andy Wilman, who's the uh, the producer of the show, is uh, you know a very creative guy, and that is you know this was all their idea and everything. But very few people did. When I had to speak often. I put on a very big French like accent, accent and you know, so nobody accent. knew it was me. <laughs> it's good, good. So I was going to say, your voice will shine through through that helmet. <laughs> okay, got it. Um, now, I've also heard uh, the time has labeled you the world's unluckiest racing driver. Tell me why you think that is. Do you agree with that? Well, I, look, you know, at the end of the day, I, I was lucky to be a racing driver, and I'm, I'm yeah. you know, given the nature of the game, I'm lucky to be here. But yeah. there were there were so many moments where, unfortunately, I was leading a major race, and the, the car would break or something crazy happened or whatever. So and the big Andrew Motor 2002. Well, the Andrew Motor in Formula One, that was, a, that was just a complete nightmare. But I got to Formula One, but that was the, um, there was a problem with it. It was called the team I was driving for. <laughs> but there were many other international races where, you know, I was leading by a long way, and then suddenly something crazy would happen. And you just look up and go, please, why? you know, why? But, you know, I'm still here, I'm still having fun, so I can't complain too much. And you've been driving since the 80s. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a pack of us, actually. We all kicked off together. We called it the Rat Pack. It's mm -hmm. me, Damon Hill, yes. Johnny Herbert, Mark Blundell. There's two others called Martin Donnelly and Julian Bailey. And we all mm -hmm. started together young mm -hmm. in Formula Ford, and then Formula 3, and then Formula 3000, and we all made it through to Formula 1. 
So it's pretty special time. Yeah. But we were, we had some fantastic adventures and some great fights, but we're all very close friends. In mm. fact, I'm seeing all of them the moment I land back in London. We're going out to dinner together. Nice. And do you still do racing now, I think? No, I talk faster than I drive now, I really do. Um, I, I, managed, I, I had quite a few injuries in my career, but, mm. but I was able to drive through them or repair. Uh, but the last one smashed my shoulder very badly. And unfortunately, that was it. Yeah, but you know, I was only going to get older <laughs> and slower. No, but I, I look back at your career and, and write some moments are just unbelievable. Yeah. I just can't, can't believe what happened to you. But do you believe in, um, in luck? Yeah. <laughs> do you believe? I, I, well, do you think you know, you're lucky, or do you believe in luck, or just, it's just the I, way forces congregate? I, yeah, I think I was just one of these people that just things happen to you know. Yeah. I mean, it became so crazy. My entire career shouldn't have happened because I didn't follow much racing. I had no money to get into it, and because of all the the, the situations I got myself into, I actually wrote a book called Flat Out Flat yes, Road. Yeah. Yes. And it was actually at the book launch, that's where Jeremy said about Top Gear. So we had this big party in London. But the book is now one of the best ever motor racing yeah, books. Yeah, fantastic reviews as well. Oh, thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. 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 And I really enjoyed writing it. But I tell you, sometimes there were moments when writing it where you go, you know, some bits of her, you know. And there but some... people appreciated the honesty. Oh, thank you. Because it was it was the behind the scenes of, of Formula One and race driving that you think is so so glamorous. So well, I mean, there's a lot of it that is, but you're not, you know, but if you're trying to get there, it yeah. takes a long time, especially if you've got no money. Yeah. So I think many people are faced with difficulties in their careers, mm -hmm. and it's just one of those things to turn around. And this this is what I say in the speeches: is that yeah. you say, look, keep fighting. Yeah. What what choices are there? Keep yeah. fighting, keep thinking, keep going. It's all yeah. about passion. Mm. It's all about heart. And then hopefully you can do the job as well. Yeah. But you know, it's important to have a lot of fun along the way. You're only here once. Let's right. do everything really well. Yeah. And which is gonna lead on nicely to the next question, because how do you deal with disappointment? So is that your answer of passion? Yeah, I think so, because I, you just have to just say, well, okay, you know, you can only di be disappointed if you try to do something. You know, and it goes wrong. I mean, I understand failure. I really understand failure. I also understand success. What I don't understand is not trying. Disappointment is when things haven't come together the way you want it. So then you just get back up, dust down, and try to get the things the way you want it, and try to make sure it works. It hurts, of course, but you have to build up an immune system. You have to build up these barriers to just keep coming back. Because if you can't survive disappointment, well, you're going to fall at the first or second hurdle. Right. And so you're traveling the world now, and you're talking to business leaders, yeah. um, sharing your experiences. So it's motivational, inspirational stories. Um, what, what would be some, some tips that you could share with our business viewers out there? Oh, just it, it's passion. Keep a dream. It's mm. like, you know, I think that I don't think about money first on anything. Uh, what I do think about is, that, do I want this? Do I believe this can work? and then give everything I've got. You know, if, if you were restricted by thinking about money all the time, mm. then you're gonna stop the creativity because you're gonna, oh no, that won't work, or that won't work. You know, if you believe something's possible, if you really believe it, then you're gonna work so hard. And that takes the risk out of it a little bit anyway, because if you're so energized to make it happen. So for me, it's like, follow what you wanna do, that passion first, uh, and then, if it's successful, then worry about the money. Yeah. And what would you say to um, a person who's facing a whole lot of challenges right now and they just feel like they're very, very unlucky at this moment in time? Well, what just, would be a word of encouragement? I think that one of the things that I used to do was sometimes in really bad moments is to look back and think, well, hang on, Gary, you've won that race, you've, you've been on pole there, you've been faster than them, you've been faster than them, so you've done it before, you can do it again. Mm. So just Sometimes give yourself a bit of a pat on the back, you know. Yeah, realign. Yeah. Smell the roses. Exactly. Yeah. And just say, look, you know, you can do this. Okay. So just get everything into position again, and you can do it again. So that's really all I have ever tried to do. And just say, well, come on, let's go. You know. Well, thank you so much for your time with us. But thanks so much. It's lovely being here. Thanks very much. So we've been here with Carrie McCarthy, and thank you for being with us on the Leader Automatic Show. Thank you.